Okay, well, we are live. This is Nate Wolf, Fired for Truth, and I'm excited about tonight because this is part two of our Testify to Truth series, and with me tonight is Alan Sherrill. Uh, last week, we recorded and then premiered the part one of his testimony, where he shared about his upbringing. He shared about uh, moving into his young adult and college years and how he became an avowed atheist and uh, was very much involved in digesting the greatest works uh, that related to atheism and some of the leaders of the movement today and through the history. And then he got down the rabbit hole, as we all do. And when he got to the bottom of the rabbit hole, he realized that there was a great evil present and seemed to be connected to all of these things. And he realized that it was Satan. And if Satan was real, then maybe he needed to take a closer look at uh, the Bible and the God of the Bible. And so he did that. And in so doing, he became uh, a person who had faith in Jesus Christ and understood the Bible as the word of God. And so that was a powerful uh, turning point in his life. And he shared that testimony with us. And tonight he's going to share with us part two. He's going to continue to share a little bit about some faith experiences uh, after having that first uh, turnaround. And then at the end of tonight, he's going to share with us about um, his coming into the knowledge of flat earth, the true biblical creation, and how that uh, began a conflict <laughs> at his job, what his job was and how he uh, managed through that and uh, what the result was, and maybe uh, some lessons that he learned through that. So, Alan, uh, welcome back. I'm so glad that you could be with me again tonight. Thanks for having me, Nate. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be back and uh, get into this information. Awesome. And I have to tell you that uh, there were several comments about the beard in the, in the live chat last time. Uh, a lot of people are like, man, dude, he's got an awesome beard, uh, which I concur. I concur. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, it doesn't yeah. take work. Just, you just don't shave. That's the trick. <laughs> <laughs> That's the trick. Well, uh, without further ado, I want to just give you an opportunity to kind of jump right in to part two of your testimony. So I'll let you go ahead and, and start. And then if, if there's any questions or things that pop into mind, I might jump in there. But I really just want to give you an opportunity to share again and uh, use this platform as an opportunity to encourage others, uh, but also to bring glory to God. So we'll go ahead and let you uh, let you start wherever you want to start. All right. All right. Well, uh, if you haven't seen the first part, you may not really know where we are. I recommend you go back and watch it if you can, if you got time. If not, no worries. Um, but basically, I went from being a hater of God. Really, I was. I mean, you could ask my parents and friends when I would get drunk, it would come out. Uh, I would blaspheme God. I would I would belittle it. And and uh, they didn't like it too much, even though they live like practical atheists. They claim to still believe in a God at the time because they were drinking with me, partying with me, friends, family. But uh, <clears throat> like you said, I went through a long journey of truth and it led me to the foot of the cross and uh, a profound experience with Christ that I, I couldn't deny. And uh, so that's where we'll pick up right now is uh, because I didn't grow up, you know, steeped in church and learning that stuff. You know, I came to God through the word and uh, that's how he revealed himself to me, you know, and, uh, and there's benefit to that. There's no denominational doctrine locking me in. There's no, uh, I guess, um, bias that I had, it was, I was wide open, you know, just brand new, teach me if the word says it, I believe it now. And, uh, but the negative is there was no discipleship. There was no, no, no fellowship. There was no one even I could share this with. And one thing I didn't really detail in the last one, uh, was how shy I was growing up and sort of the superficial world I grew up in, you know, where, emotions aren't really expressed, you know, and I was an odd, weird kid. And I, I quickly learned not to express that, that <laughs> side of myself. Yeah. Right. So uh, I sort of put on a front, you know, and was very shy, you know, not trying to be fake or anything, just sort of guarded, you know, afraid to really let myself out. 
except in front of a few specific friends, you know, as I got older. And, uh, but you can imagine now this journey of truth was internal. My girlfriend earlier at the time didn't want to hear it. She ended up breaking up with me. So, you know, I was single and my friends didn't ever care to talk about it. So my whole truth seeking journey was alone. So coming to Christ, I mean, going from A to Z and down every rabbit hole you could imagine, how do you even express that to someone or even begin to unpack it? Talking years of deep study into some controversial and crazy subjects, you know, mm, yeah. so how much harder to express my true self when I couldn't even before. And now my true self is this radical born again Christian, not to mention I, I realized how I used to view Christians. And by Christians, I mean the ones that actually wanted to live for God, the one that actually was always telling you Jesus saves and you got to quit sinning, you know, that I, <laughs> I knew it existed somewhere, but my I didn't see it around me. Um, that's, that's a note in and of itself. Some of my friends who had attacked me when I was younger, who were Christians, was drinking and smoking with me and never reading the Bible, never praying, never seemed to care about God. I encounter God and I immediately know I need to change my life. I immediately know I cannot continue in these sins. Um, in fact, I'm going to read a scripture here real quick, uh, pertains to that, uh, which may answer some of their questions if they still have them. And this is, uh, first Peter chapter four, and I'll just read verses one through five. Okay. It says, therefore, since Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same purpose because he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. There's an interesting teaching right there. So as to live the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. For the time already past is sufficient for you to have carried out the desires of the Gentiles, having pursued a course of sensuality, lusts, drunkenness, carousing, drinking, parties, and abominable idolatries, which I well did. In all this, they are surprised that you do not run with them in the same excess of dissipation, and they malign you. But they will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. So they do wonder why I don't run with them anymore. But Ooh, because of that, yeah. in Galatians and in different parts where it talks about what doesn't enter the kingdom, I mean, I quickly got a P King James Version concordance with my King James Bible, and I lived in my prayer closet. You know, when it said go into your closet, I said, okay, and I go in my closet, you know, when I, and, uh, some of these words you break down, you know, was exactly what I was doing late night, going out, partying, drinking, all these things immediately. And, and I didn't even have to get that deep in the Bible from the first time I read it for the spirit of God to convict me. Um, but like I said, as much as this new self was so fired up and on fire and I wanted to tell them when I would walk around them, there was a fear. A fear came over me because I was always afraid to express my true self. Now, how do I even express, how do I even open this conversation? Mm, yeah. Afraid of what they would say. And I would end up just putting on the old self. I'd let the old man out of the coffin, if you will. And I would mm -hmm. have a fear and it would turn in. And I quickly realized it was like Satan was trying to kill me. I know that sounds extreme, but it was like I lived in wildness, drinking. You know, I don't want to get myself in trouble with the law, but I, we did all kinds of stuff and nothing ever really harmed me. But as soon as I came to Christ, when a weekend would, and I would pray and read my Bible all week, but I couldn't really avoid my friends on the weekend. I was living with them. And, uh, drinking would come up and this stuff would come up and I'm just being blatantly honest. I would kind of give in, not even want to. And I would put on that old self and I would, I would, all, I would wake up bloody or it was like worse sins than when, before I came to Christ, it was like, it was like Satan didn't want, he was taking advantage. Ooh, yeah, I, was giving, sure. I was giving him anything. And I quickly realized that. And I, and I weep before God, like, why do I, why am I doing what I don't want to do? I, I don't want to do this anymore, but I didn't know how to tell my friends that. So, I quickly realized I need to just escape on the weekends, you know, start there, you know, early, this is brand new in my faith. You know, I don't know how to walk this out. I just had an encounter with God. Um, so, you know, I would escape. My parents would be going out of town or something. I would escape to their house for the weekend. And uh, I, 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 like I said, I had no fellowship. So I quickly started looking online and uh, I found the music of Keith Green profoundly affected me, comforted me. And then the ministry of Dr. Scott Johnson, uh, I don't necessarily agree with everything the man teaches, but boy, it was like sweet music to my ears to listen to him. Cause I remember going to my parents that we can just laying down, like 
sort of exhausted, overwhelmed by the reality I found myself in it. How do I live it? How do I do this? And just the comfort of listening, you know, to his channel and like knowing there's another human in the world. It's not just a radical <laughs> Christian, but understands, yeah, for sure. he understands the new world order, understands the wickedness in high places and the spiritual warfare that we're in and talks about it very candidly. And it was just comforting, you know, but that's short lived. You know, I go back and I'm living with my friends again. So then I devise, maybe I'll, I'll go camping, you know, because they keep asking me, where are you going? You know, I'm going to go camping. I knew most of them wouldn't go. And so, you know, I go camping that weekend with some of my other friends who I could be a little more open with, you know, and that was a wonderful experience, you know, away from sin, away from temptation in the wilderness. And, and naturally, when you're hiking out there for a while, just the conversations completely change from the worldly stuff. You begin to talk about, you know, God and nature and all this sort of stuff. And it was such a again another breath of fresh air yeah for sure but then you know and then i come back and you know i even get dogged on a little bit for for missing out on the weekends just those few times you know i'm already getting crap for it um <laughs> i know that you know they don't know what i know and i for something i couldn't I, something i couldn't express it so i just knew i've got to get away for a time i've got to escape so i can grow in my faith and and not give in because I always wanted to make people happy. I always would give in to people, you know, even if I didn't want to do, I was a pushover, you know? Um, so that was when I devised to go and start a farm really to basically to get out far enough to a property where I could live, where I could stay and, uh, connect to, to nature, to God. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's exactly what I did. And it was with much prayer, you know, a lot of prayer, I must have looked at a thousand places. I mean, I kept looking farther and farther and realized you get a little more land, cheaper taxes. Everywhere. Yeah. So I kept going and going and praying and praying. And uh, I was just praying. I, I don't know where this prayer came from, but every day I said, I pray that you lead me where I can do your will most efficiently, most effectively. That's all I would pray every day, every day, every day. You know, because when I first came to faith, I vowed to God. I said, I want to serve you more fervently than I ever served Satan in my ignorance. Right. Ooh. I was not I was naive that, you know, what these struggles were immediately going to be upon me, you know, uh, because God does sanctify you. But it, sometimes stuff is not overnight. There's a lot of internal fears and struggles and things he wants to cleanse you of. And he's got to take you through a lot. Of, some of us are more stubborn, <laughs> a lot of lessons, you know, to grow you in your faith. Um, but he did. He led me to a place. Um, and El Bethel was connected with this house and I hadn't gotten that far in my old Testament yet, um, to know that was even in the Bible. I just, and, uh, but I remember being in this house and opening, it was actually a picture Bible that, cause my parents had just moved as well. And I had gotten some of the old books and I found an old picture Bible, which I never knew we even had, you know, and I was in my house, not even fully furnished, sitting on the floor, flipping through it. And it was talking about Jacob traveled you know and went to uh, yes you know, leaving uh esau and uh sort of running away you know and uh slept in that in that land and had the dream and god and angels uh ascending and descending and then it said you know he woke and he named it bethel or el bethel or el bethel mm -hmm. and then the bible doesn't you know define that although you can look it up but this picture bible did it said which means the house of God or God's house. And I'm sitting here like weeping, you know, like he's really talking to me, even through simple things like that. But it's like daily he's communicating to me as I get in his word. And it was like, it was so needed, you know, but it was, I had to, I learned that I can't keep running from my sins. Eventually you got to face them. Right. Yeah. I would go back for a birthday. I would go back for this. And it's like, I would grow and grow in my faith, you know, and the beard is kind of a testimony to that because my beard would just start growing. It just felt natural. I liked it, you know, but when I would decide, okay, a birthday's coming up or I got to go to a family function, I'd shave it real clean. You know? <laughs> like my mom, the girl, they think I look a lot cuter that way, you know? So I, I'd spiff up for the world because I had a fear of man more than a fear of God. Right. But that would get me in trouble. I would go in and you want a glass of wine? Well, maybe one, you know, I mean, I know this sound, this is like not good to admit, but you know, it was a struggle. It was, my walk was like, fall you know a little grow grow fall. i mean it was a struggle it was a struggle you know so i went back less and less I was like that place is not good for me you know uh to grow and grow in my faith now i can go back now and i can tell them you know i don't drink i can tell them about god i've grown in my faith but at first it was a battle 
Um, so how are we on time here? Cruising. Uh, so basically what happened, like I said, was there, God had to teach me a lot of lessons. Um, I started bringing employees one, you know, the first guy that came up, lived with me is a good friend of mine, you know, and while I was trying to minister to him, you know, he brought things back into my life, things that, that struggled and, you know, that, and God had to teach me how to be bold. He had to teach me how to say no to things. He had to teach me how to be a, a boss. He had to teach me a, a lot of stuff. He had to teach me, like I said, how to confront things and say, and make a stand and say, yes. no more, not in my life, you know, and, and profess it to my friends who thought I was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. You'll smoke. That. <laughs> no. And I definitive. And, and there's something to be said about that. There's something to be said about voicing something openly before man and the power that then comes with acting it. Because yeah, yeah. You, yeah. if you hide, like, like I was saying, I was afraid to tell him about God and that made, led me to live in the old way and get into sins. But now, you know, with my brother, other people, as soon as I, I really talk about God, it empowers me, it inspires me, it emboldens me, and it even makes me proud, more happy about living for God and living right. You know, and it subverts the temptations. They're like, oh, this guy would not want to, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it brings conviction upon them even, you know. Um, they don't really like to hang out with that. And that was sort of my fear was that I was going to express this extreme faith and they just weren't going to want to hang out with me anymore. You know, and now they think I'm the one who don't want to hang out with them. But, you know, that scripture explains why um, that I read earlier. So, so a lot of employees... A lot of crazy stories that I'm not going to go into now, you know, with uh, I mentioned the other day, one of the guys that was meditating, I, I start, really started to minister, try to minister to people when I wasn't mature. You know, I really started to like if they were poor, if they were in the neighborhood, come work, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you, come help, you know, I'll help you. Oh, here's food, you know, giving of my time and my money. I just wanted to just help everyone. And I quickly, you know, there are some people that they become leeches and they cause more harm and curses upon you than, than good. Because you know? yeah. like, if they're an alcoholic and they're just going to go spend it on that and then come back. And it's, I realized a lot of stuff through that. There was also, you know, women, there was an older woman, you know, wanting to be an employee that I got to know through the health field who eventually, you know, attached herself to me and became an employee and slowly was working into my life and eventually even thought that, you know, the Holy Spirit told her that I was the one for her, you know, and it was like a, a lesson in false spirits and, and the bewitching that had come over my eyes from all the yeah. it was crazy, you know, and then the Zoja kid that uh, I met through a basketball ministry, that was the one who was doing the prayer and yoga. I wanted to bring him on my property uh, and let him work. Um, I gave him a trial period and uh, quickly learned he was of another spirit, you know, even though he said he read the Bible. Once I started learning, he did meditation and all that stuff. But him and his cousins were working and we would do Bible study in the morning and then we would go out and work. And I mean, these Bible studies, his brothers, you know, I mean, his cousins would love it, but he, it would always end with me and him going head to head. And wow, him yes. trying to counteract the Bible. And even where his cousins were saying, you're false prophet, bro. And they would almost fight, you know. <laughs> it was like, you know, I was trying so hard to minister, but I, I had issues still in my life. And uh, But nonetheless, God is teaching me through all of it. I ended up telling him after that time because he, he would want to go home. I had to pick them up and he would want to fight or the cousins or various reasons, you know, I wouldn't want him as an employee, you know. And uh, so I told him I didn't want to hire him. And uh it was like things went downhill from there. Crazy stuff started happening. I got a um, crazy infection in my leg, you know, out of nowhere. And it just got worse and worse. And, and that was when that other lady like came into my life. And it was like this oppression came over me. I just wanted to flee. Ser several times, it's like things, I allow things into my life and I'm trying to help that bring this oppression and I'm, I don't know what's going on. And then God shows me and I have to fire someone. I have to get them out and this peace lead i mean this people, yeah i mean those were spiritual attacks they were spiritual attacks it was like non-stop things come into my life that seemed to be wanting to get me off of this land to get me out of this part to make because all i want to do is run and then i pray or i seek counsel and i get you know someone says you are you do you not see this you got to get rid of that or this and, and i do and so god is was teaching me a lot he, he he can even use a kind heart that wants to help people against you right if you don't have right discernment in ministering um so, but that turns out that Zoja kid, he, 
he said, I told God to curse your land if you didn't hire me. He kept calling and pondering, you know, how's things going, how things going when they were going down. And uh, I had just started going to this other church and I had them pray over me and it's like it released. Like it was first that land. He had weird books on witchcraft and stuff. But this was the guy that I, I eventually came around asking to pray for him because the spirits that came upon him started beating him up at night physically, you know, and he was terrified when he told me that. But all, all this stuff, you know, and uh, was interspersed with learning how to grow and, and all these, you know, struggles and, and lessons. Um, and finally, you know, it was like I got rid of the last, you know, employees. And uh, I was I was at a, you know, one of the many crossroads I end up at where I'm saying, God, what do you want me to do? Um, and uh, well, let me just go back. I was invited after several years of listening to my ministry, you know, my ministry, the ministers or the fellowship was online, right? Mm, yeah. Listening to people. Like I said, it started with Dr. Scott Johnson. It, it led me to, you know, the Hagman and Hagman Report and uh, Pastor uh, Langford and uh, Derek Prince online. And uh, I mean, so many, you know, I listened to the Steve Quails. I listened to everybody, you know, went down all those um, listening to that stuff. But I never really had anyone to interact with that really believed, you know, so one day this guy came down my driveway and uh, we were gardening. We came out and started talking to him and uh, he had heard I had a garden and I started talking to him. He found out he was a believer and uh, he invited me to his church, which was uh, a Baptist church. And uh, so I agreed to go. And I mean, the first time I went, I weeped and weeped during the worship service. Mm. Because, well, one, there, there was just a, a man of God with his kids up front row, his wife was singing and I mean, I later found out she came down and stood next to him and the pastor. And, and I just weeped because there were people around me that were really worshiping God, that there were men of God still in this world. You know, fam I mean, I had seen so much bad, you know, I was yeah. I just looking at the songs, just thinking about God, what he'd done for me. And I was so happy, you know. Um, but as time as time went on and I got to know them more and more, I kind of got very discouraged. I got discouraged because they worshiped like they really loved God. But as soon as we walked out the doors, it was like no one really wanted to discuss God. And there was a lot of uh, complacency. You know, I guess Ooh. grow up in the church and, you know, especially, you know, I don't want to talk doctrine. I'm, I'm not knocking this or not. But when you have a, a one save, always save doctrine, you said the prayer, you got it, you can't lose it. And then you have a preacher, well, we all sin, you know, and they're not really digging into the word and dealing with the difficult difficult verses and, and and really not getting fired up like they they kept saying you know we love your new fire and i kept thinking you know you've been a believer for how long you should be a, a flame you should be a, <laughs> yeah. huge why am i the flame okay uh i wanted prayer warriors i wanted people to enter into spiritual warfare with me and like really go against the enemy and minister in the community um and i just yeah, for sure talk about football this or that i started several bible studies and actually they would they would progress to the point of them grasping the gravity of our our mission and everything and when they wanted about get active you know it's like bam it would it would disband and and, mm. and like the enemy the enemy does not mind i don't think if you just go on sunday and you do nothing else it's like okay they're they're asleep they're not really effective right sure, now yeah compartmentalization of your faith yeah yeah and, and not to knock churches because the prayers are effective and there's a lot of prayer and the worship is effective there's a lot of that and the good what they do to the community there's a lot of that but i'm saying it's like he Satan's done a very good job of making us you know more about this building and less about action less about and less about understanding you know the like the bible talks about men of understanding like like mm. men like that understand the times to understand really wickedness in high places like what we're up against and and the yeah series. the uh the men of issachar yeah 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 so so i guess i just had this seriousness and this zeal and i got frustrated that it wasn't shared with anyone i was meeting um you know and uh and i and i wasn't perfect either i had my ups and downs in that period you know that was during some a lot of these lessons and with workers um but eventually, you know, I, I settled in there and uh, um, just started going to Sunday school there and uh, going to church there so much, you know, got to know the pastor. They let me share my testimony to the youth. Um, and then uh, I became, you know, 
part-time computer guy and eventually the full-time just the guy up in the computer you know that oh yeah in the booth in the booth you know and uh but it's like this yearning to actually minister this yearning to like express the stuff i know and teach and do something more but you know it's like computer week after week you know and uh uh so it, but in my in my own life with the farm like i said i finally got rid of that last employee and it it was like it had gotten to a level where I couldn't manage it on my own. I was worn out from the land. I wasn't even profiting really from it, although I loved the fruits and the vegetables I grew. And so did the people who got the ones that I did. And uh, but I just knew I needed a new direction. I knew I needed a break from the land and I needed I needed something in ministry. I needed to, to be something in ministry. I didn't know. And, and I also needed a helpmate. Right. So I have written here two prayers, uh, two desires, two prayers. So those were certainly a lot of my prayers at that time, uh, you know, and God brought me a, a godly woman who actually very early on was very instrumental in encouraging me to express this extreme Christian person. Amen. Uh, amen. You know, she very much, she's bold, bolder than God, me. God knew what she needed. She knew exactly what I needed. She's been a full-time nanny too. I, I needed some growing up. He knew exactly <laughs> what I needed. Uh, but and, and then it's, but as far as like my work, you know, my purpose within that, I wanted to begin something in ministry. Um, and so I started praying firm, fervently, looking online for maybe some youth ministry, maybe something to get me in the door, anything, you know? Um, and it was in that period, it wasn't even a week full of, of intense prayer that uh, the pastor of the church, who I knew pretty well at this time, called me and, and asked, uh, he's, they also have a school, a Christian school connected with the church. Wow, okay. the ministry, they started a long time ago and it's grown. And uh, he called and he said, you know, one of our teachers, he's also a pastor. So he's a pastor and a teacher. I mean, I don't know how he did that. Well, I guess that's why he quit. But he, he basically was a full time minister and he was teaching Bible, science and history at this Christian school. And I guess he had taught the year before. And this was like a week or so. I mean, this is barely into the school year and he basically came to the pastor and said you know uh if i can't do it you know if if today yeah. was the last day i'd like that you know he got, he got burnt out probably he got burnt out and i understand it you know these kids were tough sixth seventh and eighth grade uh they're tough and uh so he said you know he's leaving and we need a new teacher monday you know this was like close to the weekend and i've just been praying god give me something you know and uh and he said one of the one of the elders' wives woke up in the middle of the night and said, Alan, and just had my name. So they're praying. They're praying, oh, God, we just lost a teacher. We need a teacher. Give us a teacher. I'm right around the corner praying, God, give me a job in ministry. You know? <laughs> and and he wakes up and says, Alan. And they say, he won't want to do that. He's farming or whatever. But they said, well, just give him a call. And uh, so they called me, and I was like, he had no idea how excited I was on the inside. Nice, like, nice. He said, just pray about it. I said, I will. You know, I called him back not long later, and I was like, let's do it. You know, I'd love to do it. And uh, so so that was like starting, you know, Monday. You know, it was like just like that, get me in there. And uh, so in Bible, science, and history, it's like couldn't have been more perfect. You know, I love all these topics and with a passion. And uh, so I remember the first that Sunday, uh, the first night before I was teaching, and I was just in tears of joy. I was going to bed with tears of joy, you know. Nice. I, nice. Cry, I, I guess I cry a lot, you know. That's <laughs> yeah, okay, man. Uh, I was. I was so excited about it, and uh, so. The first year, you know, I go and I and I make a huge I make a lesson for that day, you know, for Bible, you know, I share a little bit of my testimony. The Bible was the first class of the day, you know, and so I had them in there and I, and I taught them about myself and what we're going to do and uh, got going. And then they introduced me to the science and the history, you know, the curriculum and all that. And, uh, and it started right away. Uh, now, I got a bachelor's in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, which is somewhat of a you know, you go into teaching a lot when you, you get that anyways. But so but they knew me so well for so many years, for a couple of years or whatever at the church that they felt very comfortable, you know, and I was even teaching Sunday school now. I forgot that, you know, I was elected by the elder. I was teaching the elders Sunday school in that church. 
Uh, so they knew they knew by now. I've been to the past several times that I, ha I had a knowledge of the word, that I love the word. And, uh, you know, so they let me teach. Um, so everything went fine that first year for the most part. Um, like I said, I'm a pretty radical Christian. You know, it's it's hard to it's hard to put me in any environment and me not be controversial some way. I don't try to be, but yeah, it's controversial. The word is controversial. I mean, it's like, I mean, we know you can't go through Genesis one with an honest read. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Now I wasn't on that page yet, but I definitely was on. You can't get past Genesis six without some crazy stuff, you know, and and beyond. But uh. It, it, nonetheless, I came in with such a passion and desire. I, I began making my own lessons. They were like sermons and teachings, praying God lead me, you know, lessons from the Bible, walking them through the Bible, teaching them that. And then I would formulate my own quizzes and tests after that. They were totally cool with that. Before the kids were doing some rigid book, you know, and I they had to memorize a, a Bible verse every week by Friday. And, uh, you know, and, and they were really actually enjoying it. They were right, really actually into it. Um, and then partway through the year, I decided to do Kent Hovind's creation seminar series because that was such a I, I just thought, you know, give them something to watch here that they're, they're, they're tired of me preaching to them. <laughs> you know, and Kent Hovind has a way and it's and it ties in creation. He does a very good job, I think, you know, despite what he believes about the earth. He's still a brother of Christ in my eyes. And he helped me a lot break down evolution and stuff, because even when I came to Christ, I still had all these these things uh in my mind uh that he helped break down and, and just increased my faith um so i showed them those seminars and uh they loved it you know no one has a problem with that you know but towards the end of that year you know i started realizing the thing that has these kids is the culture um in a christian school a lot of uh a lot of the kids come from Christian homes. A lot of them are in church, some, you know, different denominations. You know, it's mostly Baptist types around here, but there's churches of God and, and various ones. I mean, there's a ton of churches around here, but uh, some are, you can tell, you know, more fired up for God, more knowledgeable. Some are just kind of, you know, maybe if their parents are their kids, they just kind of go to church. And then you also got the kids uh, who, their parents just thought it would be a good school to get them into, you know, they're very worldly. And, uh, you know, I could talk on for days on Christian schools because I watched some of these kids come in the rotten apple, so to speak. I mm -hmm. yeah. watched them corrupt some of the other ones. Even the second year, I watched some kids come in and, and change some of the kids I had the first year that were so genuine in their faith and so innocent. Um, but what I, I, you know, I picked up a book one day that one of the girls, one of my students was reading and it was called Pretty Little Liars. And I thought, well, that's not good. You know, thou shalt not lie. Well, I flip it over and I read the synopsis on the back and it's like every one of the Ten Commandments is committed in just the synopsis, right? There's a murder, there's some sexual things, there's lying. To, and I'm oh, like, yeah, they, they made a movie out of that book. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And but I, but it was that wasn't like the first thing. That was just one of the things that just really said, you know, I got to do something because they they were uh, the other teachers. You know, say we have an off day, you could show them like a little movie in your class or whatever. You're done with your uh, that study, and you have one more day before you know a weekend off or something, and you you could show them a little a Bible movie or something. Well, they were showing the, always showing them Disney movies and all these things, and I thought, how can you do that at a Christian school? Like, if they want to do it with their parents, want to do it at home, that's fine. But I had done a deep dive into Disney, and and I mean, the Magical Kingdom. Come on, you know, mm -hmm. if you really read the Bible, sorcery, this stuff is real. We know the Magical Kingdom is not the Kingdom of God, you know, and nothing but sorcery and witchcraft and and all this stuff. And uh, so, you know, I would never show them that stuff, uh, but they were entrenched in that some of the kids would come to me and show some of the tv shows they were watching and stuff and i just thought man i gotta teach them about this stuff you know so i did i, st <laughs> I started teaching them about uh some of the music and some of the artists and, and why they shouldn't i you know idolize these people and i started teaching them about the culture and this and disney and some of this stuff and uh there was another teacher who, and, who certainly did not like me uh she led a she led them in a play at the end of the year of the beauty and the beast you know and uh and i mean take what you want from that but i mean at a christian school you your final play you could do anything from the bible you could do a fun anything you know and you're doing 
Beauty and the Beast. I just thought that shouldn't be at a Christian school. Maybe I'm too, you know, I don't know, square. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, but she de- she she would come in sometimes when I was teaching Bible, you know, and I would touch on some subjects and, you know, wherever I was seeing a lead and they would ask questions and stuff. And we would discuss some of this stuff. You know, Harry Potter, I talked about, you know, a lot how the Bible is inspired, right? It's, it's living, it's breathing, it's spirit. It's inspired by the Holy spirit. It's you know, sharper than a two edged sword. You know, it's, it's, it pierces you. It reveals what's in your heart. It's a mirror, it, it, but it cleanses you as well. Um, so, but, uh, there are other books and other things that are spiritually inspired. I knew this firsthand because when I used to smoke weed and make art in college, it would like the page would draw, show me shapes and I would draw them. And some of my art teachers were like, wow, make more of this. I'm like, okay, I got to get real high again. And <laughs> literally, But some of them, I look back, they're very dark, they're very dark imagery, you know, but what is the inspiration? What was I doing? You know, it was like, and now if I make a painting, if I make art, it, you, it's clearly more bright. It's clearly, you know, uh, animals or nature or something, you know, good, you know, um, so there is inspiration in things, and it takes it to another level. You know, Harry Potter; these things come to them in dreams, and I try to express them that 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 their enemy, the spiritual enemies, which they're fully aware of. I mean, this is a Christian school in a country town; these kids know their Bibles. Um, yeah. That uh, uh, you know, the Twilight and these things that they were watching can have spiritual effects on them. They can sow rebellion in them. That, that the enemy is planting ideas they don't even know subconsciously. And that just like the Bible can cleanse your soul, these things can defile you. And that, I mean, Satan doesn't just create things just to waste our time. That's a good tactic. But there is, he's got many pronged approach attack on our youth, on our kids to put these ideas in their mind. And so I would break down some of these subjects and try and show them why they should try and refrain from these things. I also would get into health. You know, I would talk about the Bible and, and, and some parents didn't like that too much either um the kids thanked me a lot of them uh but so there was a few areas where people weren't very happy with what i was teaching towards the end of there especially uh the one teacher who was like best friends with uh the headmaster who was the pastor's wife oh yeah and she would often you know look at me like how dare you teach that and and then run up to the office i thought she's talking i know <laughs> but at the end of the year you know they never complained i, I coached basketball I didn't pay, they didn't pay me extra for basketball um yet i would be gone until traveling you know driving the bus till get back at 10 o'clock at night so i mean i'm there all day but i loved it i love these kids um it, god taught me so much through kids and through teaching and uh but by the end of the year uh, the last couple of weeks of Bible, she that other teacher who taught the Bible taught Bible to the upper school. I said, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take all of them and take over Bible today. I want I got a special lesson, you know. And then the next day, she was like, Oh, I, and Steph told me to take it again. And then it just turned into the last. <laughs> she she, Bible. And I was like, I think I got the memo. <laughs> yeah, she replaced you. They don't want me teaching the kids, and I think there was maybe a parent that complained about. Uh, exposing Disney or something. They really, they, that's people really have uh, idol for some of this stuff, and I understand it. And it, but I felt led to talk about it. So that was like the little bit the first year where you know some teachers didn't really like me. But the beginning of the next year, she ended up leaving, uh, and so the pastor uh, kind of stepped in and kind of took over down there in the lower building where we were, and he also took over Bible. Um, so they didn't let me teach Bible a second year, but nonetheless, every other teacher, I mean, they love me. They still love me. You know, I still hear from some of them that wish they still think it's wrong what happened. They still wish I was there. I still talk to some of the parents. I still, I fellowship with some of them who really, you know, think it was wrong what happened, but nonetheless, uh, that was the first year, you know, it still went well. I, I loved it. You know, I was excited about the next year, you know, um, But towards the end of that, I forget when, towards the end of that year or maybe over the summer, somehow I saw, I don't remember if it was Rob Skiba video or if it was, uh, because I ended up watching all his stuff, or if it was uh, Robbie Davidson. I know I watched The Global Live pretty early on, like you. And I mean, I was just like, I got to go read my Bible again. This makes sense, you know. And uh, I dug in, you know, I'm scientific minded, so I was looking on every front, you know, but what sold me was just what the word of God says. I Absolutely. mean, and, yeah. I, and I had read the Bible and studied it and, 
and I, all these scriptures were coming to my mind. I just started reading it afresh, and I was like, this is so simple. This, how come I never question what the firmament is, you know? And, uh, <laughs> and uh, well, actually, I looked at it. I just didn't comprehend it. It's just, it's, it's amazing how you can have blinders, and then it's, it's like your eyes can be open, and you see it everywhere. Psalm 19, I mean, the, the, <laughs> you know, God has set a tabernacle, a tent for the sun, right you know and it runs like a strong man running a race you know and nothing on the earth is hid from the heat thereof and, and just and then you know of course but when you see this you know but isaiah what is it forty twenty two? god sits above the circle of the earth right um but then you know you learn isaiah in a, uh, i think 11 or uh what is it 22 18 yeah 22 18. Yeah, yeah he's like he's like i'll roll you up like a ball and toss you into a foreign land it's like he knows what a ball is the holy spirit didn't make a mistake on that one you're the only person to yeah. use a ball right and also like robin them say you know that he's building on the foundation haven't you heard it's written in the beginning you know it's it, and it's throughout you know we could go all day on this and yeah. i and I'll do in my bible matter of fact i'm going to show you the front of my bible right now you guys might like this so you got oh yeah you see that and there's like hundreds of scriptures right there and those are only a fraction of them i go through and i i i, I uh categorize this isn't i don't know if you can see that oh yeah so i put little symbols you know towards certain topics that i find fascinating in the word of god one of them is biblical cosmology and it's like People say there's like four and there's thousands. If you include all the ups and the downs and, you know, heaven mm. and earth is beneath, you know, and, and that's what you teach kids. You know, where's God? He's up there, you know? Yeah. Okay. Well, China's pointing down, you know, but you read Ezekiel. He sees the firmament. He'll say, what's the firmament? Ezekiel sees it. the shining like a crystal. And above it is the Lord's throne. Yahweh's throne is attached to it. Right. I mean, he's enthroned above the vault of the earth. The New American Standard flat out says it, you know. So don't vault, yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, vaulted dome, yeah. But it's throughout the word. You can't divorce it. You can try and write it off, but Dr. Michael Heiser, scholars of old who are honest with the text, know what it says. Um, so I was I was sold, you know. Uh and I and like I said, I dug in deep. I studied this stuff, I watched every video I could find. I I, I was reading my Bible like crazy. I was reading the book of Enoch, I was reading all kinds of stuff, and uh, but now here's my dilemma. I'm a science teacher at a Christian school and I just taught these kids from this book and I got to teach them again from this book and the globe is all over it. What do I do? Right. Okay. I could go to the pastor and say, Hey, look, I found the earth is flat. And, <laughs> and I know, I know he would just say, stop, don't teach that. Not allowed. And, uh, and I probably should have gone to him first. And that was one of his critiques. And I, and I apologize. But I, I, I just was so sure of this in my heart that I said, you know what I'm going to do in the it's the Abeka program is the Christian curriculum that they use. And throughout it, their scripture, they 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 recommend you read the scriptures, go above and beyond and provide supplemental information. Uh, even in reading about the solar system and the earth, they say, read Genesis chapter one out loud. You know, and I so what I thought I was going to do, I said, you know, what I'm going to do I'm going to show them things in the Bible. Nice. And they contradict the Christian textbook, so be it. I'm going to teach them about creation. I'm going to teach them what science says is so. I'm going to have them memorize that, and I'm going to have them take the because the preset tests and everything on the globe and the core, the inner core, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to teach them that stuff. I'm going to teach them what I was taught in science, but I'm also going to show them the Word of God. I'm going to show them that, yes, it does contradict in areas, and you have to discover truth for yourself. And that's Amen. the way a college course teaches. When I went to college, I loved history and stuff because they taught. They said, okay, this is what history says. Okay, but here's a letter from Jefferson that tells that he has a completely different agenda. Here's this. What is truth? You know, they don't just shove it down your throat, memorize. And I thought, I'm not going to shove what I really feel and, and know is a lie down their throat and not give them other parts of the scripture. So I so determined to do that. So be it whether I get fired or not. At this point, I, I really did not want to get fired. But I thought I cannot teach this lie. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to show the scriptures and let them come to their own conclusion. I didn't say, hey, the earth is flat, you know. This. And uh, so that was what I determined to do. And uh, so going in the second year, like I said, I wasn't teaching Bible anymore. 
And uh, and let, let me just share this real quick because it just came to my mind. You know, the Kit Hovind stuff, with, with, the reason I showed that is because I started asking them questions about creation. I go, how old is the earth? You know, one kid, basically, he's like 3.8 billion years old or a million years old. <laughs> the science tagline. And I'm like, oh, no, you know, I don't believe this. You know, the Bible doesn't teach this. Even our Rebecca book doesn't sh- teach that. And I was like, I want to show them that the creation is scientific that the flood, there's evidence, you know? So in showing them that, that one kid that said that came to me later in the year and talked about how uh, I felt I like I almost denied God. I didn't believe, he said, but then I started thinking about the stuff you were showing me in the Kent Hovind videos and the evidence was too overwhelming. And he said, he said, I'm sorry, God, forgive me for doubting. And he said, and I felt the peace of God come back upon me. Wow, amen. So, so there, and there were other kids who had other testimonies, other kids that would come to me for prayer and stuff. And, and so... You know, God was definitely working in the school, and I absolutely loved it. Um, so I come in next year. I'm teaching history, science, and I'm coaching basketball again. Um, so we're ahead. Is oh, we're right on time actually, pretty much. So, so history. You know, I taught the curriculum. You know, I would throw things in there here or there. You know, I mean, it's annoying. You, everyone is a Freemason. And the book doesn't tell you that. You know, every hero of whatever is in some secret society or doing something else. Yeah, exactly. They don't tell you that. So I, I shared some some stuff here and there, you know. And a lot of these kids are like, yeah, my dad talks about that, you know. And, and but really, I stuck to the curriculum pretty strict, you know. Uh, uh, and no one ever had a problem with any of that. You know, I talked to some parents about it and stuff too. They showed me some stuff, but. Uh, in science, like I said, you know, I, I taught on the plants, you know, you teach on the human body. I taught everything. But when it came down to uh, teaching the globe, teaching all that, I mean, I did. I had the pictures of the globe with this cross section with the, you know, the mantle, the moho, the outer core, the inner core, you know, all that stuff. I, I taught them that. I gave them all the worksheets on it, the quizzes and tests. But uh, I also... Uh, So what was the first thing that I did one day? Well, first started, I just started hitting zingers and I could, I couldn't help it. I don't know if I had fully determined to teach this, but like I was wrestling with this forever. So it started out in just kind of zingers, you know, like when we were talking about the core and stuff, it even said in the book, you know, the cola deep borehole or whatever that thing is. Yeah. Yeah. Russia. By man, you know, it said that. And I just threw them questions, you know, while we're talking about the core and all this stuff, I was like, how do they know what's beyond that if that's as far as they've dug? And they're like, I don't know. Tell us. I'm like, well, you got to search it out for yourself. What if they don't know? You know, I would kind of like throw out questions, you know, <laughs> and uh, let them ponder things, you know. Uh, but then it came down to one day and uh, I basically wrote down the notes for that day. And they were so frustrating. It was like talking about the speed of the earth and the curvature and all, all that sort of stuff. And so I wrote down on one side of the board all the notes from from the book. And then I wrote on the opposite of the board, I had multiple scriptures for each point that completely contradicted it. The earth is established. It cannot move. I mean, all those ones being established. I put all those on the other side of the board. And I kind of just like sat back and let them kind of try and take these notes and comprehend it. And and their faces were amazing. You know, it was like some of them were trying to combine them, you know, <laughs> like, hold on. Some of them just take it. They don't even notice, you know, it's like, it's like, they don't even think it's like words go, repute to paper and they don't even think about yeah, it. Yeah. Some of them start asking questions, you know, and pondering it. Some of them looked excited, like, wait a minute, what, you know, and uh, what are you trying to tell us here? I'm like, this is, what do you mean? This is what the word of God says, you know? And uh, so, you know, it sparked a very uh, lively discussion really. And I really, for the first time in their life, they said, you mean, the textbooks might be wrong or something. And that, like new idea, you know, <laughs> like, like awesome. yeah, humans can be wrong. You know, I could be wrong, you know, but I believe the word of God is true. But you have to seek this out for yourself. You yeah. know, there's, there's seemingly a contradiction here, but you have to seek this out for yourself. Well, what do you believe? What do you? And they loved me at this point. So I, they wanted to just believe what I believe. I said, no, 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 no. I said, I believe the biblical cosmology. That's all I'll give them. I believe what the Bible says, you know, and like, do you believe it's a sphere? And I wouldn't even tell them it for I, I would just, I believe what the Bible says. Eventually, they gleaned, they understood that I believed certain aspects of the word. Absolutely, of the word. yeah. But but I was making them question, you know, and so, but still, they're studying everything that it says about the globe. They're having to memorize it. They're having to take every quiz and test and do every worksheet and every homework on that topic. I didn't make them do any extra anything on the on what the Bible says. Uh, one one day, it was actually the day where it, the book recommends. This was in another class. Recommends to 
read Genesis chapter one. Okay. Right after they're telling you it's a spinning globe. And all <laughs> nice. I'm like, okay. Okay. We're going to read it. We all read it out loud. Okay. And then I go, uh, all right, now get out a piece of paper, you know, and we're going to draw. I'm, I'm going to read it again and you're going to draw what you hear. Right. Not what you think. Draw what you hear as I read through it. Think about it. Try and imagine this creation. And uh, two, two of the uh, girls who liked it, pretty artistic, said, can I draw on the whiteboard? So we had different whiteboards in my classroom. I let one draw. And, mm -hmm. another one. and uh, I go, OK. So, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And uh, I started off and immediately everyone's drawing a globe. I go, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. I go, when did I say there was a circle or a globe or anything like that? And they're like. He said earth. I said, but, what, but when did it say anything about it? Listen right here. It says, and the earth was without form and void. And I'm like, okay. And they started racing. <laughs> and started, like, okay, here we go. And I read it and I'm like, okay. And, and the spirit hovered over the waters, you know, and I'm reading and then it gets to, you know, and then God put a firmament in the midst of the waters to divide the water, you know, to separate Ooh. the water from the waters below. And everyone's just frozen. What's a firmament? <laughs> and I, and I kind of realized, like, oh, I got myself in some deep water here. But all I'm trying to do is get them to draw Genesis. So what I did, I told them. I told them what the scholars believe. I told them what all the scholars believe, right? Mm -hmm. I said, okay, it's tradition. I said, you know how we watch Ken Hovine? He actually discussed it, if you remember. You know, he's, he believes it's an ice, an outer ice uh, rain. Canopy, rain, yeah. Canopy over uh, – um, up in the atmosphere over the earth and then during the flood it broke up and kind of rained down and that's why it's gone you know it's kind of a problem you know ezekiel saw it and david says praise ye the lord waters above the firmament long after that but yeah in the psalms yeah yeah so so i i uh i basically told him that and i was like a lot of scholars you know most of your pastors and stuff they're going to teach uh that it is the atmosphere you know, or, or that the waters above are, you know, the rain and the dew and the waters below are like the lakes and oceans. And and some teach that it's space or, or some sort of expanse. And I said, and some of the scholars, which they do and which they have throughout history, teach that it is a hard crystalline dome structure over the earth. They're like, what? You know, they're like, <laughs> like, you believe that? And I go, I just believe what the Bible says. Yeah, but which one of those do you believe? I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I believe what the Bible says, but I couldn't resist. I'm like, well, let's go. Let's look through the word about the firmament, you know, and I kind of take them through in Ezekiel. I kind of take them through the stuff, take them to Job. The sky is hard as a molten looking glass. And I'm like, what do you got? I just showed them the scriptures. Amen. And Amen. they grasped it from the scriptures, what I believed. And some of them said, I believe what the Bible said. You know, they were on point. Other ones kind of like were triggered. You know, the older ones get triggered. And I don't know what it is. You know, eighth grade, they were like, you're crazy. It can't. It's, it's a ball. I know. And I'm like, whoa, OK, I never said it. What you can believe that nothing. The younger ones are like, yeah, man, this is yeah. a, there's a firmament, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that's why the sky. Is blue. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I'm going to get in trouble. But I'm like, OK, I'm like, guys, I just want you to know that, that you have to seek truth for yourself. You know, the scholars debate these things. But don't bring don't make it a controversy. You know, memorize what's in the book and you but. If you believe the word of God, take it whichever way you feel God is leading you. You feel led, you know, and I gave evidence for all. I gave evidence for both sides. I gave scriptures all over and uh, mm. already been fed a globe their whole life. You know, so so most of them, you know, a lot of them were kind of like, I'm not sure. Many of them were like, it's a globe for sure. But some of them were straight up like there's a dome, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. believe it, you know, so yeah. much, you know, that the next day, you know, one of them came running to my classroom before the first period. It's like, Mr. Cheryl, Mr. Cheryl, look at this. You know, it says the earth has pillars and it says there's four corners. And he had all these scriptures. He had gone in his Bible all night long reading. Praise God. Thought, At least he's getting in his Bible and reading it. You know, yes. and I paid him off. I said, you know, the pillars, you know, they could be the, the great mighty men of God. That You know, the, the pillars, it's like they uphold the world with their prayers and stuff. I'll like, say they could be physical peers. You know, it talks about the earth you know, shaking on his pillars or whatever. And I was like, in the corners, I mean, that, who knows how that works? I was like, that's really good, you know, that you're searching in the word and trying to understand this stuff. Exactly, uh, yeah. I thought it was awesome. Um. So, so you know, a, as each sixth, seventh, and eighth kind of came to the study of the stars and stuff, and of course, when you come to the stars, I talked about readily, the stars fall from the earth like figs, you know? I'm like, what are we going to do with this? Look how big Beetlejuice is. Look how big these things are, you know? And and so I really gave them both sides, but I did not go against the curriculum in that. I did not not teach the curriculum. I made them memorize all that stuff. I want to instill that because the letter they wrote me at the end said I didn't teach the curriculum, which is just a lie. 
Uh, so the letter that I eventually get, I'll, I'm jumping ahead of myself here. So basically what ends up happening is kids talk. They talk like crazy. You know what I'm saying? Especially oh, something, yeah. about, something about this topic. They just loved it. That's all they wanted to talk about. You know, it's all they wanted to talk about. So but there, I, was a, there was a buzz. <laughs> there was a buzz. I pretty much just became known as the, the teacher that's a flat earther. You know, I even had one of the other teachers ask us to say, ask him if he knows about David Weiss. So this teacher had heard of David Weiss. And oh, like, deep inside the rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. I heard of him, you know, and, I, and, uh, and so I was like, yeah, I have, you know. But this was later in the year. Uh, basically what ended up happening, uh, the pastor was teaching Bible, and he had allowed around this time, you know, ask me a question, you know, from the Bible. And so, of course, they ask him, you know, does the Bible teach the flat earth? Does the Bible teach us the dome? Does the Bible teach that? You know, and they're asking oh. <laughs> And so he, so he gives them, and 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 one of them said, Mr. Cheryl said, you know, you know how they take work. Like I would never say the Earth is flat. I I believe that I I would only say I believe what the Bible says, and you can take it whichever way you want. But you know, it comes out of their mouth. Mr. Cheryl says the Earth is flat. <laughs> like whatever. And and I your, talked co your cover was blown. Yeah, no other teacher. They all knew, but none of them ever confronted me. The pastor then knew, and he would give them scriptures like give him Isaiah. Uh, 4022, you know, and they would bring it to me, hey, look at this. And I'd be like, well, look at Isaiah 22, 18, you know, and I would kind of share this stuff. So there was this like communication through the kids, but the pastor never came to me. He never, he never cared, you know, and, and they might move on to teaching the next thing in science. And, and it's like, no one really cared, you know, all of the kids often want to talk about it. I, I was like, no, we're moving on the subjects, you know, um, but it wasn't until a little while later, I think, that one of these kids was so fired up about this topic that his mom, he, he tried to convince his parents or something. <laughs> you know, he starts talking, and, and one of the moms uh, complained. And uh, this is when I got my first, you know, Mr. Cheryl, you know, we'd like to have a meeting. You know, you get the email, meet me at 3 o'clock. Yeah, I know all about that. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm now, you know, and we're like halfway through the year or something. But uh, the pastor sits me down, you know, and we pray. And then he just kind of opens up and and is like, what is this? You know, you got to stop teaching this. And I, I was basically, I told him how I did it. I told him how I made him critically think. I told him how I didn't force anything down their throat. You know, I encouraged them. If they believe in the boss, I said, great, you know, believe what you want to believe, but, but seek out truth for yourself, you know? And uh, I said, I didn't depart from the curriculum and that I taught the whole curriculum. They, mem they know everything about the spin of the earth. They know about the stars and the names, all the planets. Um, and uh, I was like, and I have stopped talking about it because we moved on in subjects, you know, it's behind every class now. And it's, you know, and the cat's already out of the bag. And uh, he was like, OK, well, don't talk about it anymore. And I can't believe, you know, and I and I just so then I started sharing. Well, I mean, there's a lot of scriptures that say this. So I started sharing and I had a ton of scriptures just off the top of my head. I mean, I'm just throwing this and this and this. And uh, he's kind of starting to ponder it. You know, he's like, well, I'll, I'll look, I'll look into it, you know, just from, for the rest of the year, just don't really talk about it. And I was like, no problem. And I apologize. I didn't come to you first, you know? So, so we had that meeting and he was, he was fine, you know? So I, I left and uh, didn't talk about it the rest of the year in class. You know, they would always ask questions about it. And I was just like, nope, stay on topic, you know, and we would go through the rest of the year. No problem. Um, and then it wasn't until, you know, the rest of the year is fine. We even went on a field trip to Noah's Ark. You know, it was awesome. You know, this is how much everybody knew. You know, we went to the Creation Museum and we're sitting in the planetarium and it's talking about the expanse of the stars and it's flying you through space. The same documentaries I watched as an atheist about the stars, but now it's like God created this and how beautiful. You know, it's like the same, you know, wonderlust of the stars of unfathomable scales just zoning around and looking at stars you know um and and the kids are making comments like right when we walk out of that little planetarium i'm next to the pastor you know and they're like that was all fake wasn't it, mr cheryl <laughs> and, uh, he's like stop the pastor like kind of smiles like oh gosh you know but that was kind of how it was it was like yeah that happened you know but he he's an honest teacher we everybody loves him the teachers love him the kids love him so it wasn't like really a problem um but then what ended up happening was towards the very end of the year, there was one kid who, like I said, you know, he was from a secular family. You know, he, he had a very worldly influence. He was always getting in trouble with every teacher. You know, and I felt for the kid because his, his, he didn't go to church. He was one of the ones that wasn't church. And his dad had died of cancer just before that year. So before that school year started, we sat down with his mother and there were two of them that were first time coming to the school and like a week before their dad had died. And so, I mean, here these kids are, they just lost a father. 
and they're you know they grew up in public school and in the world not going to church and and like i said i saw them kind of corrupting the other ones with the video games the words and the stuff but i still had a heart for this kid you know because i could tell he has pain he's searching you know and it's tough just being a teenager in and of itself you know um but he had kind of latched on to a few of these kids that really loved who, who they began calling it biblical cosmology because, <laughs> because they knew flat earth was like a taboo word that like I would get in trouble. I was like, I can't talk about this stuff, guys. We're going to keep moving on, you know, but they knew like biblical cosmology. They began calling it biblical cosmology and uh, amongst themselves. Like one of these kids had a folder of all these scriptures and drawings of the firm, <laughs> you know, and uh, this kid was, I mean, uh, he, this kid was on fire for God. You know, he was, on, on and in and off, um, on and off. Uh, that's a whole nother story in of itself. Uh, but uh, the other kid, you know, was friends with them, and and we even started. They asked if we could do a Bible study after school, and they would come. You know, on Wednesdays, I asked, they let me do it, and they would come, and we would pray, and 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 he got, and the other kid who I said it was pretty on fire at the time, like asked the guy if he wanted to give his life to Christ, and we prayed with him, and he was crying, you know, and and though he was still very worldly, he was seeking, he was seeking something, Ooh, you know. Yeah. Um, but it was the and, and I connected with him and he really connected with me and it was at the very uh, end of the year you know like I'm at my computer like we're in exams or whatever it's like the last week or so and he came to me after school one day he was also one of my basketball players and he, and uh, he came to me and uh, he said do you have any scriptures on, on biblical cosmology you know and this is after school and I had just talked at a church um, from one of my students parents who are now all flat earthers who wanted me to talk on the subject. So I had a PowerPoint, all scriptures that I just shared on. He said, do you have any scriptures on biblical cosmology? You know, I paused and I thought, you know what? This kid wants scripture. This kid wants to read the word. And I was like, yeah, I can print this. this Amen. I printed it for him and I gave it to him and he went home, you know, with, so he was so excited to get it. I stayed put it together. He's like, awesome. Thank you. You know, and he went home and, uh, it was probably the rest of that week panned out and that was the end of school you know there was some teacher time and we were doing some stuff but it wasn't a little after that school had ended and i got called in for a meeting you know and uh i'm kind of like you know i kind of on edge because like like i said i'm controversial you know in all kind of a lot of what i did like i was very loving i followed the rules but it's like they even asked you know i was kind of against christmas and stuff and i was open about it you know but so like when we dress up week, like they had, uh, you know, dress is your favorite Christian character, you know, Christmas uh, character, you know, and I'm like, I don't want to dress as a Christmas character, you know, but I don't want to be, you know, a Grinch or whatever. It's, I was like, I'm going to dress up as a Puritan <laughs> 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 because the Puritans consider Christmas satanic and outlawed it. <laughs> nice. And I dressed up as a Puritan and uh, I had a, uh, this little, I, I, there's a, actually, they have a copy of, you know, a public notice, you know, we've deemed Christian Christmas a sacrilege and a satanical practice or something like that. Anyone, nice. found, nice. anyone found participating must pay uh, five shillings, you know, <laughs> I put that on my door, you know, joke, I'm joking around you. Yeah, I know they're going to celebrate what they want. They're going to do what they want. They love that holiday, you know, but I had been led, you know, over time that not to really delight in that. And uh, because of its history, you know, to each his own. I love the songs. I love celebrating our Savior's birth, but I just did it. I wasn't about that. And uh, like one, I mean, it was, I had the little things rolled up. I was handing them to kids, you know, a little public notice. Just joking. Yeah, yeah. But nice. I mean, the teachers knew me at that time. One of the teachers came and brought me, she was dressed up as like, I forget, some Christmas something reindeer or something but she came and brought me five pennies she paid the five shillings you know for for celebrating you know but like i i always like it was kind of like some some parents someone is not going to be happy with me yeah you know, it was hard in that environment and i restricted myself a lot because there's so many topics i wanted to discuss biblical doctrine so many things you know yeah. i just had to teach what was there but going in there i thought okay this is not good you know probably um so I go in there and uh, <clears throat> basically, you know, it was, it was a lot like your experience to a degree. It was like I come in kind of thinking this isn't good, you know, and immediately you start praying, you know, and we pray. And uh, I start to feel a little bit of peace because he's praying and then immediately, you know, angry, you know, and he's yes. angry first about church drama. He had since left that that whole church, you know, before that, you know, other stuff had gone down. Uh, 
but he, he came and confronted me about information that I shared in repentance because I continued to go to that church about the previous elders and about being frustrated that no one would really answer a lot of my questions. They would never really meet with me much. And he confronts me about what I repented of. Someone's, wow. still, yeah, someone, nice. someone's still in the church going to him saying he's saying this, which it was in a repentant state, you know, with the, the only elder that stayed and the like seven, eight people that were in there, you know, on a Wednesday. And uh, and and it, he confronted me. You saying I didn't ever meet with you. We didn't have it. And I was like, whoa. First of all, and you know, I was repenting, you know. And I and I'm not ashamed to say anything I said there to your face. You know, there was a lot of beating around the bush of certain questions. There was a lot of I'll meet with you, but you never met. You know, there was a lot of stuff like that that went down, and it was nothing against you. I was actually repenting of my heart towards you guys. I was repenting of my heart that I had judged y'all. I had judged another man's servant. I, you know, and I was repenting of that because I had some ill will towards some of the elders. I never showed it or expressed it. Um, so he calmed down a little bit. He said, like, okay, fine. And, and then he's like, well, I had, you know, uh, I don't know if I want to even detail who came in because I don't want this kid to ever watch it and be upset that he was a sure. part of the impact. Let's just say a family member came in very upset, very upset. You know, I guess I kind of already have shared it, but very upset of what their kid had you know, the information and basically wanted me fired. And they, you know, the flatter, it makes people upset. Yeah, I know. I understand. I totally understand it, you know? And, uh, he basically said, you know, gave me an ultimatum. You quit talking about this stuff ever again, or we're going to have to let you go. Mm. And immediately, you know, I'm just like, Oh, I'm like, this is my heart. This is my, con this is my conviction. I'm a science teacher. Right. And he's like, well, just give him the gospel. And he kept saying that, you know, a lot. And I was like, I do. But, you know, I talk about creation, too. I talk. I teach science. Right. You know, I teach science and I teach about these things. And if they're contradictory to the word, I cannot teach a lie and not offer what the word says to you as an option. Give them Amen. An option. Amen. Give them a chance. Right. And, and again, I shared even more scriptures and he talked about. I had sent him the first time we talked and said he was going to talk. He never really talked to me, but I had sent him an email with actually, I think Pastor Dean Odles, some of his sermons on it, because I knew he would kind of connect with the pastor and uh, and some of Rob Skiba's stuff. And uh, at this point in time, he said, yeah, I watched some of that stuff that you sent me. And I didn't, you know, he said one of the guys was saying, you know, this is going to make you mad. He said, it doesn't make me mad. It doesn't make me mad. You know, the guy, sure. with, the guy with the curly hair. I go, the guy with the curly hair, I, I never sent you anything with the guy with the curly hair. He said, well, I researched all that stuff. I was like, the Rob Skiba stuff? He's like, yeah, I researched him before all that stuff. I'm like, I don't think he had. Like, I don't think he even knew what he was talking about, you know, because he couldn't even discuss it. But he just said he had looked into it. He doesn't believe it. But now, I saw I really dug in and was showing scripture after scripture after scripture. And he would say, well, this, you know, I'd have, well, what about this? And I would share the scripture, show where that's contradictory, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, he really started, you know. He even laughed at some point, like, I agree with that, you know. And then he was like, well, he came to the conclusion where he's like, I honestly don't know the shape of the earth. He was like, and like, he, he realized that I was so passionate about this that I couldn't just teach the globe, you know, alone, you know. Mm, yeah, so absolutely. Grasped that. And I, I think they really valued me as a teacher to a degree as well. So he was like, okay, you know, what we'll do, because this is, we have a whole summer before the next year. He said, what we'll do is me and you will meet. You know, we discussed for several hours that day. He's like, me and you will sit down, we'll meet. And uh, if you can convince me of this, then we can move forward, you know, and we'll work with the curriculum. We'll do something, you know. And so I, I left that excited. I, I I'd wanted to sit down with him and get in the word more often, you know. I had wanted some of this. And uh, so I left that excited, you know. And uh, I mean, it was the next week. I'm, and he said Tuesdays and Thursdays. You know, he had took he had just stepped down from pastor. He had gotten a job, but he said Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm pretty open. I can I can I can meet. So you know, I waited a little bit, and and uh, Monday, you know, said, hey, you want to see if you want to meet tomorrow? You know, no, I'm busy. You know, I, I got to do this. And Thursday, you want to? No, I got a funeral to do. You know, and then it was the next week, and it was the next week. Oh yeah, you know, next week, and then it was the, and it was like a week he wouldn't respond. So like at all. So I would. You know, and I was so close with them before they left that church, and, and I was even closer with it, uh, his wife because she was the headmaster of the school, and we prayed regularly before school. You know, a close relationship with those teachers and all them, and uh, so I text her or email her and 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 say, hey, you know, is Mike busy? I didn't I didn't get a response. She said, oh, sorry, he'll call you back. You know, and, and he would finally get me. Sorry, maybe next week. 
but this pushed on and it and as the summer drew on i slowly started to kind of get it i slowly started to get okay he's not he's, he's not, not interested in me he's, yeah. he's not gonna sit down and uh i tried again you know hey how about next week and uh he didn't respond and i think this is when i text uh stephanie again i mean i wasn't like overbearing i gave him a couple of weeks you know and i tried try try you know give him a week try you know because i really wanted to sit down you know and i even told him because that was one thing he confronted me about that i wasn't willing to sit down so i was like i'm gonna push you on this you know uh, and he's like okay you know uh so eventually you know he wasn't getting back to me i texted his wife and she said he's gonna call you and he called me that day and he basically just said you know we decided not to renew your contract and it just it, i mean it hit me hard, but I kind of already slowly got discouraged. I kind of already come to that point where I'm like, this isn't looking like he really wants to meet, you know? And which, is a, which is a nice way of saying you're fired. Yes, fired, right? Fired for truth, right? Yeah. You're saying you were teaching something we don't agree with. We take the parent side. We take the, the science side or whatever. You are yeah, and it's also fired. about this. It's also about this right here is and that's what i was going to say you know about christian schools you know is it starts with a good heart it starts genuine and there's still a lot of good teachers and all of them i know they pray they love that school but then it starts to become about you know bringing in more people making more money keeping the parents that you do have raising the school's rating and level you know it becomes this whole other aim instead of truth instead of christ necessarily i mean yeah right? and all ultimately 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 it came down to the fact that you were viewed as a hireling, right? Yeah. That sounds horrible, but let's be honest. A replacement. Because I, I know what that feels like, right? And then as soon as people start complaining and, you know, they're concerned about money, losing people, uh, you became expendable at that point. Unfortunately, even though you were a, a beloved teacher, you got along well with people, you know, our situations are so similar. You know, I... I had a good relationship with most of the people at the church. They loved me and my family. You know, there was a couple of people who could, you know, really didn't care for me. But, but you know, that's going to be in a church of 200. That's going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, you took a stand on on the word of God and, and based on your conviction. And, and you got fired for truth, man, you know. <laughs> I know. I know. And, and what hurt probably the most was like any teacher will know what I'm talking about. You see these kids five days a week, all hours of the day, especially if, I mean, if you're coaching basketball, it doesn't end. You, you travel with games and you ride back, you get to know them. And these kids had had teachers in and out. They constantly taught. They were small classrooms, but it was like, you know, a teacher would get through half the year and have to leave, or, or that other teacher was there for a year and then he left in the first week. And they're and they were like, never had consistency. And I always told them, I was like, I'm not going anywhere, you know? Yeah. And, and then I got nixed without being able to say goodbye or anything like that. And uh, some some of the kids got my number. I, I had their parents' number from basketball. You know, when we're getting home, and it was a while, a little while later. You know, they texted me, and uh, several of them. They said we all cried. You know, the first day of school, when we found out you weren't there. Like, thank you for teaching me that. And these kids were constantly writing me letters and notes. One kid mm -hmm. talked to me. He didn't believe in uh, in he believed in the globe, but he 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 came up to me. He said, Mr. Sherr, I just want to tell you, I appreciate. You, you showing us that we can stand for what we believe in. He said, Ooh. I don't agree, said, but it encourages me that even though other teachers and people mock it, you stand on it and you believe it, you know? So that was even someone who didn't believe, who appreciated it, right? But then there were yes. others who said, thank you for sharing this stuff. You know, they're like, I don't drink sodas anymore. I feel so much better. You know, there were several topics, you know, that they loved, you know, that I, I would touch on. But it was it was frustrating, you know, but I, I just want to let this be known that I don't have any ill will towards any of the parents, the students, the teachers, anything in that, the pastor, anything Amen. in the situation, nothing but love. I'm not telling this to slam anyone, but it's just a reality that there are certain biblical topics and in, in, in churches, in jobs, in areas where you touch on them, they can get you fired, you know, and it's just a, it's a, it's just a sad reality, you know, where truth isn't as important sometimes as money and these other things. Amen. And yeah. And it's, you know, it's, but it's important to testify to that truth. You know, that's what I've been doing. Um, and, you know, I just uh, I, I really appreciate the fact that you reached out to me months ago and kind of shared your story in an email. And I was like, man, I got to talk to this guy. And, 
and we spent you know several hours you know sharing about each other's stories and you shared and i'm uh, i'm just really excited that i finally <laughs> finally got you on the schedule i got things worked out on my end you were ready to go and uh i don't want to cut us off but we've been going for a good while here and i want to uh just save a couple minutes here at the end to uh, you know to just say thank you for sharing your testimony i know that uh like you said, you have other stories and part of, you know, stuff related to faith and growing pains and spiritual battles at the farm. And I know that you're going to have other opportunities, you know, to share uh, perhaps this testimony and maybe some of the other details that you didn't have a chance to share on my channel. And so I want to just uh, give you a minute to say anything that you want as we kind of wrap things up here and uh, let you have kind of the final word here before we sign off. Man. Put uh, you on the spot. Yeah, I about drained myself. You know, no, I'm just kidding. It, you know what happens. You're going to let me talk too much. But I guess, I guess I'll just say uh, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you uh, for standing up for, for your faith and for the truth and for what happened to you. Because I knew I would, didn't really plan on coming out and telling people about this. I didn't want to make an ordeal or whatever, you know, but in seeing you come forth, I saw the fruit of it. I saw people rally around you. I saw that you inspired people and hopefully you inspired more people, pastors and people, because if Amen. people are getting fired for a belief, talk about uh, freedom of religion or, or freedom of speech, you know, for a belief, you know, especially as Christians, one that's in the Bible. That is like yeah. hundreds of scripture. We can show you the scriptures, and even Ken Hovind admits they got zero scriptures for a heliocentric model. You know, yes. so so yet it's it's still getting you fired. And I've learned that you know I'm not against churches and stuff, but they they've come to a point where it's like it's like somehow all these modern pastors know how to preach out of the Bible every Sunday and never step on toes, never be controversial, never touch true sound biblical topics that I see on every page of the Bible. And it's like mm -hmm. I can open my mouth and someone not hate me or fire me or make me, you know, kick me off a of Bible, kick me, they eventually kick me off of uh, uh, teaching Sunday school. And I was just teaching on the parables of Jesus, the kingdom parables. Oh, wow. they're, they're, wow. they're convicting. They're convicting. Well, and here's the other thing is you got the enemy upset. And uh, yeah. the enemy, you know, he can't make people do stuff, but he can tempt, he can incite, you know, he can cause problems. And obviously he did that in, within the church that I was, uh, you know, ministering before I got fired. You know, gossip was a big part of that, a whole ordeal uh, and the situation, you know, turning people against you. But really they were turning, they were turning the, even the minister against the very word of God, which is which is a you know total shame in and of itself so yeah th thank you for for that encouragement and uh i just want to say if there's anybody watching this testimony you know and you find yourself in a similar situation make sure to reach out to people get godly counsel um pray about it study it through and there is an element in which you know we do need to count the cost um but even in my situation and in alan's situation Sometimes, you know, things sneak up on you. You know, you have plans that, hey, we're going to study this out. People are going to at least hear me out. Sometimes the rug does just get pulled out, you know, right from under you. Uh, but, yeah, I appreciate uh, Alan's testimony very much. Um, Alan, if someone wants to reach out to you, uh, is there an email that's best to use? Yeah, you want me to share it here? Or you want to put yeah. comments? Yeah, you can share it here. So if anyone wants to to contact me, just has questions or anything, or if you want to me to share my testimony, interview me, whatever, you know, I love to share it. I love to talk, and I love to get into several topics. I mean, there's a lot going on in the truth of community and Bible doctrine. Yeah. So by I, the way, I think you need to start your own YouTube channel and start talking about some of these other subjects. But well, we'll I, talk about that another time. Yeah, I'm on the tipping point because I watch so much, and it's like, man, I see some gaps. I see some things missing. I see some truth on both sides i need to share something you know so awesome. maybe i will but if anyone wants to talk contact me now my email is spring pond nc at gmail.com spring like a water spring pond like a water pond nc like north carolina at gmail.com so it's spring awesome. pond nc at gmail.com i'll respond to that you know and uh whatever. and you guys, you guys can message me too as well uh 
I can get a direct message to Alan if need be, uh, since we have each other's cell phone numbers. Yeah. Well, well, Alan, I, I'm going to say we're going to wrap up for tonight. Uh, and I really, really appreciate uh, these two sessions, these testimonies, part one and two that you've given us. Um, and uh, I just want to make sure that we thank your wife as well for, for the sacrifice of the time there and for your buddy Wayne. Uh, letting you use some of his equipment and make sure we had some good Wi-Fi and all of that. So I yeah. uh, appreciate that. Um, I'm sure I'll have you on my channel again in the future. You know, there's there's no uh, there's there's an endless supply of topics, I'm sure. But I just want to thank you for hanging in with me for several hours the last few weeks. And, uh, you know, we'll we'll keep in touch. So if you're wa so if you're watching, uh, like I said, uh, you can reach out to Alan uh, springpondnc at gmail.com, or you can reach out to me, and I can get a message to him. I thank you guys uh, for spending this uh, several hours uh, with us and with other testimonies. It's testimony is such a powerful uh, format to share about God's word. Ultimately, I know Alan is on the same page with me. We want to bring glory to God as we're also in edifying and encouraging others. And if I can uh, try to be of service to you in some way for encouragement, you can email me at nate at firedfortruth.org. Nate at firedfortruth, that's F-O-R dot truth dot org. And uh, you can go to my website, which is firedfortruth.org. Of course, you can leave a comment here in the section uh, on YouTube, and I'll make sure to put uh, Alan's email in the description of this video. So, Alan, thanks so much for uh, joining with us tonight. We'll end the broadcast for now, but stick around because uh, not done with you just yet. All right. All right. And I, let me just say one more thing. I just want to say, you know, support Nate. You know, it, it, he's not he's not only just doing what he's on YouTube, which has been a blessing to me, but I mean, he's ministering to people, you know, and the fact that, you know, I've emailed people in the past like, hey, I got, you know, not with this specifically, you know, and they never get back to me. You know, the fact that he took the time to read the email to get back to me, to continue to communicate, you know, I just thought in his heart, if you can't see it, then I don't know what's wrong with you. So he's got a family to support. I would say just support him. I'll be all right. I don't have a full family. You know, if you want a logo or something made, I could maybe make you one, but, but I'll be fine. I got a loving family. Even though my parents think I'm crazy now because they were not happy. they were not happy that I got fired for that. They do not Amen. like it, you know. But nonetheless, God's will be done. He, he'll he'll provide and protect me. But just uh if you if you haven't, support him because I mean he's got a whole family. He's stepping out on a limb. And I just wanted to shout him out, you know, on his own channel. But uh and just Thanks, thank so. you again, Nate. Thank you for uh allowing me to come on. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. Uh We'll probably see some of you in the premiere uh, that we're going to do here for this testimony in a few days. I hope that you are well. Take care and God bless.